Welcome back to our higher level IB Chemistry video series. This is the only video in IB Chemistry Topic 12, Atomic Structure. This video builds on the standard level Topic 2 content by looking at ionization energy and its trends down a group, across a period, and within an atom. Ionization energy is the energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms, and it is measured in kilojoules per mole. As mentioned in the penultimate IB Chemistry Topic 2 video, ionization energy corresponds to the convergence limit of an emission spectrum. In this video, the formula C equals V times lambda was also introduced. However, at higher level, there is an additional formula that you need to be aware of when discussing electron energies. This is E equals H times V, where E stands for energy, H stands for Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the 34, and V stands for frequency. Substituting the previous formula into this new formula, we can also create a third equation, E equals H times C divided by lambda. Let's take a look at an example question requiring one of these formula. If the frequency of the convergence limit in the Lyman series for an atom is found to be 3.25 times 10 to the 13 hertz, find the ionization energy for this atom in kilojoules. We would need the equation E equals H times V. So, ionization energy would be Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency. Then, to convert to kilojoules, we would divide by 1000. The answer would therefore be 2.15 times 10 to the minus 23 kilojoules. Now that you understand the basics of what ionization energy is, and how this relates to the energy and wave speed of electrons, there are three key terms that we need to outline. These are nuclear charge. This is the cumulative total positive charge in the nucleus, directly linked to the number of protons present. It increases across a period and down a group. Electrostatic attraction. This is the attractive force of the negative electrons to the positive nucleus since opposite charges attract. And shielding effect. This is the reduction of the electrostatic attraction between valence electrons and the nucleus due to the blocking by inner electrons. It increases down a group but remains the same across a period. It is also very important to remember that for all ionization energies, the electrons are removed from the highest energy orbitals first. So, whichever orbital was filled last is emptied first. This is remembered with the phrase, last in, first out. However, the major exception is that 4s electrons are always removed before 3d electrons. Remember this, it is crucial. Now that you understand what ionization energy is, let's take a look at how it changes down a group. As you go down a group, the ionization energy decreases. This is because nuclear charge increases. However, the number of electrons increases. So the shielding effect increases. This shielding has a greater impact than the increase seen in nuclear charge. Therefore, there is a decrease in the electrostatic attraction between the nucleus and its valence electrons. This means that less energy is required to remove the electron. Let's say we decided to draw a graph of the ionization energies of group 2. It would look something like this. So how does ionization energy change across a period? Well, across a period, ionization energy increases. This is because electrons are added to the same shell and so the shielding effect remains the same. However, the nuclear charge increases. Therefore, the electrostatic attraction between the nucleus and the valence electrons increases. This means that more energy is required to remove the electron. 
let's say we decided to draw a graph of the ionization energies of period 2. You would expect it to look something like this. However, in reality, boron and oxygen do not follow the general trend, and so it actually looks like this. But why? Well, the presence of orbitals causes exceptions in this general trend. You need to be able to understand and explain why these exceptions arise. To begin, it is useful to note down the orbital in which the outermost electron for each atom is found. Lithium's ionisation removes an electron from the 2s orbital, which doesn't take much energy. Beryllium's ionisation also removes an electron from the 2s orbital. However, beryllium has a high nuclear charge, and so the electron is attracted more strongly and thus is more difficult to remove. So, the ionisation energy is slightly higher. Boron's ionisation removes an electron from the 2p orbital. This is further from the nucleus and higher in energy than the 2s orbital. So, despite the increase in nuclear charge, it takes less energy to remove this electron than in beryllium. From boron to neon, there is a progressive increase in nuclear charge. So, the electron in each atom is attracted more strongly and is thus more difficult to remove. So, the ionisation energy is slightly higher each time. The only exception is oxygen. Looking at the configuration for oxygen, the ionisation removes an electron from a 2p orbital that contains two electrons. These electrons repel one another, and so it's easier to remove one of these electrons than in nitrogen. It is worth noting that the exceptions and their explanations in this way apply to every period of the periodic table, just with different orbitals. For example, in period 3, the exceptions will be aluminium and sulphur, i.e. directly below boron and oxygen. So, let's say a question asked, why does sulphur have a lower ionisation energy than phosphorus? The answer would be that sulphur has four electrons in the 3p orbital, and so its ionisation energy removes an electron from a p orbital containing two electrons. This exhibits some repulsion and so makes it slightly easier to remove than the 3p electron that is removed in phosphorus. You now know that ionisation energy decreases down a group and increases across a period. But what about successive ionisation energies within a single atom? Well, Given that each ionisation will remove an electron from an increasingly positive ion, it would make sense that the general trend of successive ionisation energies is a gradual increase. Let's take a look at the example of magnesium, which would look something like this. When explaining the trend in successive ionisation energies, it is very useful to first write out the full electronic configuration of the atom in question. So, for magnesium, the electronic configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Remember, last in, first out. So, the first ionisation energy removes an electron from the 3s orbital. The second ionisation energy also removes an electron from the 3s orbital, but the magnesium ion is now 1 plus in charge, and so the electron is attracted more strongly. It is therefore more difficult to remove and so takes more energy. The third ionisation energy removes an electron from a 2p orbital. This is closer to the nucleus and lower in energy than the 3s orbitals, so it requires a lot more energy to remove. The 4th to 8th ionisation energies remove electrons successively from the 2p orbitals. Therefore, 
Just like the second ionization energy, there is an increasing ionic charge each time. Therefore, the electrons are attracted more strongly, and it will become more difficult each time. The ninth ionization energy removes an electron from a 2s orbital. This is closer to the nucleus and lower in energy than the 2p orbitals. So, it requires a lot more energy to remove. The tenth ionization energy also removes an electron from the 2s orbital. But, like before, the magnesium ion is more charged, and so it takes more energy. The eleventh ionization energy removes an electron from the 1s orbital. This is closer to the nucleus and lower in energy than the 2s orbital. So, it requires a lot more energy to remove. The twelfth also removes an electron from the 1s orbital. But, like before, the magnesium ion is more charged, and so it takes more energy. Whilst this may seem a little complicated at first, once you have a solid understanding of orbitals and their energy levels, this should become clear. You need to make sure you're confident describing the trends in successive ionization energies for any element on the periodic table up to the end of period 4. For more practice, you can check out our Chemistry Topic 12 question pages. We hope you enjoyed this video in our higher level IB Chemistry Topic 12 video series. Check out our notes, flashcards and questions on our website to reinforce your understanding from this video.